know, unionize uh, executives of the Ghana Medical Association. The Ghana Police Services it has begun an aggressive drive to decongest the country's prisons. And according to the service, the first step is to give uh, a suspect who are led to have committed misdemeanors, lesser crimes, and the opportunity to be released on bail. And uh, we have um, COP John Kudalo. He's the Director of Operations, Ghana Police Service on the line. A very good morning to you, sir. Now, how are you going to undertake this? I didn't know the Ghana Police Service is undertaking the activities of the prison service. No, I don't understand what, what they are talking about. Mm. The, the, the Ghana Police Service says it has begun an aggressive drive to decongest the country's prisons, cells. Okay. And according to the service, the first step is to give suspects who are alleged to have committed misdemeanors the opportunity to be released on, on bail. Now, um, we know that you have a lot of suspects in the cells, and we've even witnessed jailbreaks more, more frequently than we have in our history uh, more recently. How do you hope to undertake the decongestion of the cells? Uh, I, I, I don't think it uh, should be to us in the police service and me as an administrator. It's not a big concern to congestion because this is everything that is that always. It's not a new uh, activity that we are undertaking to decongest the cells. This a thing which is always ongoing. Really? We have, yes, we have a unit called the uh, 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 Police Professional Standards and Intelligence Unit. Mm -hmm. go around, I, mean, I was privileged to head that unit for eight years. And it was one of our paramount uh, duties to go around cells at random and check the number of prisoners in custody or inmates in custody, the capacity of the cells. Because cells vary, each cell has its capacity. And it's not lawful or legal to go beyond that capacity. Mm. But you know there are some cases which are available or even people should not be sent to cells. But these are human institutions you have some people being put in cells or cases which they don't have, they don't have to be and then we have this I can see I joined uh, some of them have been pre, uh, prison custody, some have been police custody. Uh, because of the distance, the policemen are planning to go to go to uh, the various prisons where the people have been reminded. But this is not to hope please that uh, to allow people in their custody to escape. So if we say it's the congestion exercise, that is the major activity we are taking. Uh, it's something that has been going ongoing all the while as I know as uh, an officer. If the uh, officer in charge of your or station every morning when you arrive at your office or station, you have to go to the cells, interview them one by one, see, their, see whether they are lawfully you know, detained, and those who are not there lawfully, you release them. And that's why some of us different were visit offices. But uh, if we found out that people are uh, you know, not going according to our service instructions, which is very clear on cells to rules, then this is an exercise to bring to book, as I would say, those who are not conforming to the rules. But not just to continue congest them because that is the duty of the duty of the judicial officer and the original commander. Mm. But in situations where and many of us have been witnesses to some of these things, where sometimes the inmates in the cells naturally will be overwhelming the number of police officers at post. I mean we're not talking about the bigger police posts, but the smaller ones when you go a lot more into the hinterlands. And and, and that also tends to have a lot more um, some, some difficulty um, for the personnel who are supposed to be managing some of these commands or posts. Yes, you are, you are right. But as you said earlier, some cases are available. It's not that if a case is reported, you put down the person itself. There are some petty, petty offenses which you don't even have to get. The person just take a statement, caution him, and then the person is bailed. So it's the discretion of the officer to ensure that the cells have that holding capacity. More serious even cases have to transfer to bigger cells or bigger institutions. In fact, uh, if, as we tell about the policy which we are applying now, we are planning to have uh, to talk about a holding cell or a holding area, as it's done in other areas, a common detention place where people will be detained, but that's a long term detention. But a short term, we want to ensure that our officers conform to our cells regulations as in our uh, service instructions. Mm. So the fact that the, the cells, uh, the inmates are harming them, is no excuse at all. As a director of this, I have the discretion and it's your duty to ensure that our service and wishes are you know, implemented in its letter and spirit. I, I agree with you, but I also mm. agree that not all the cases that are should be put in cell. All right. As I said, as a director of this one, people have no cases that are not booked by themselves. 
We, we've had recent jailbreaks being recorded, and it, it looks as if you're just you're you're just either not many to be able to man those some of those posts, or you have too many of them in there, or also you don't have well fortified cells. Is that true? Oh, uh, it's a combination of factors. But uh, I think as policemen, as I said, we are do have regulations. So if we enforce it, we just better spread these things to happen. Of course. Jail cell escapes are not things of, uh, of the current, uh, of, of the present. That is not happening. If you ask me for a long time, there have not been a cell break. But uh, for now, a few weeks, we two cell breaks in the moment. That means last it is somewhere because if you are taking over from your colleague, the rules so you must go check everything, mm. the condition of the cells, the image, where the doors are properly locked, the number of inmates inside that, that as the best present in the handing over book. Everything is secured, they lock, they pass. And every now and then we are asked to do periodic searches in the cell. The officers will go get the image out, check the cells with their cells, that this is very foreign material in the cells, like phones and hassles, and they are removed. If over a time this is not done, then it will give room for this to do that. Mm. And, yeah, so well, from, 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 from the conclusions I draw from what you're saying, you're saying, well, we've had jailbreaks, it's no big deal. I'm not saying it's not big deal because well, 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 that, that seems to be what I'm, I'm getting from all that you're saying. It, no, it's no, it's, it's I, nothing I, I, unusual. Yeah, okay. That's, that's a, a sound service. At least once a while it'll be that because uh, it cannot be 100% full. So food, to but, you, you think it's normal? No, it's not normal. Okay. It's not normal. But, 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 not, but, but let's go on to, let's, let's let's go on to another subject. Why is it that you don't take um, good mark shots of the suspect so that you, you build a credible database? For example, when the suspect got lost, we didn't even know how they looked like. Oh, right, that's... Because I know, I know, for example, um, you trained in the Balkans and in Russia, etc. And you've had extensive training with the FBI and the other agencies in the U.S. Extensively. Yes. It's not yes. the same thing that's done in the U.S., is it? No, 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 no. Okay, I mean, so why is it why why is it that we we, we as a, as a country would want that to be done in in, in our jurisdictions? We don't oh, take much shots of the suspect when yes, when when they, when they when they when they break jail, we can't yes. we can't find their faces. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That it's largely on the part of the officers because our rules are very clear. If the police to uh, cool or put in cells, as I said, the police institutions all over the world have the same uh, instructions of uh, operations. We uh, we perform in the same manner. We have to picture of the person, his fingerprint, his uh, addresses, uh, where he can be traced, and all this. All this is taken, and then mm. put it before you place him himself. Mm. So that that... I'm saying that uh, if there's laxity somewhere, this has happened. But that's not what the rule says here. I was the same as the same uh, position of person. Okay. I, the last time I went to a, pol a, a police post in a Jumakun, they didn't have a camera there. So if, if that is your instructions in your regulations or manuals, and they don't have cameras at the post, how, how then do you say it is the laxity or the irresponsibility oh. of the officers who are managing the police post? Yes, you know, I, I hope you, know, you, know, you have a, a clear idea about the number of police uh, posts we have. We've always been buying cameras and turning them around. And if you don't have it, you can take the service of a local photographer to take the shot of the uh, uh, you, you have to take a service of an external person? Is that what oh, is yes, done in the U.S., sir? Oh, but you yeah, are talking about economics and other things. If right. we have the capacity, we'll do it. We have been... Uh, All right. All right. Yes. All right. Thank yes. you very much. And uh, COP... Um, John Kudalo, you are Director for Operations Ghana Police Service. We're grateful that you've given us your time. And uh, it's almost as if, well, it's normal. It's, uh, is, is that what you also deduce? Because that's what I get from the interview. That's what I deduce. But even before then, let me make a quick comment about what my <laughs> friend said earlier. You, see, you have to equalize. What did I say? No, <laughs> he was, I mean, making a strong point that when you, the president has a plan. And no matter what, he wants to stick to his plan. But I know that any good strategist will tell you implementation or successful implementation of any good plan depends on constant review of performance and revising your targets as you go forward. So you cannot say that, oh, once I have my plan, nothing can change my mind. Then you are not being a good manager. Mm. That is that. You almost sound like a lecturer for strategic management. Well, <laughs> right. Right. Uh, from what the uh, COP 
Kudalo. Kudalo was actually talking about. I think number one thing is that they are talking about uh, what the cells, the they cells, and not uh, prisons. Yes. So maybe the the uh, caption is a bit yes. misleading. Mm, that's the synopsis. Yeah. But the cells, you see, like you're saying. The impression some of us got was that, oh, we've had about two or three jail breaks, but that is not a big deal. For Christ's sake, I heard a criminologist uh, in, a few, in the last few days talking about the procedures that the police are supposed to have. I happen to, I don't know whether to get the opportunity or the unpleasant duty of becoming a security man somewhere else. Not in Ghana. Not in Ghana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember that there are streets rules and regulations when you are taking over from the person who is actually living you have to be sure you go through uh, there's a, a what do you call it, a checklist you go through what is a stick what you are taking over so that so you, 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 you you take you take yes. make sure yes everything is when right. i came in this and this were there you take you take you take so that by the time you're also living if you cannot account for anything then you are held personally responsible for whatever has happened at the time that the 12 hours that you were there i don't see why the police service cannot institute such a simple checklist that i mean i think one of the the, the jay bricks they said that people had a, a hacksaw blade to cut the the metal mm. and I, I i kept asking myself was the policeman on duty asleep can you imagine somebody using a hacksaw blade to cut metal and the policeman is sitting at the front desk and he cannot hear this. Mm. A trained security officer. I can't believe this. <laughs> For Christ's sake. Well, right. we have, I know that, look, I always say that Ghana, our biggest problem is our inability to reward excellence and then to punish wrongdoing. Not until we change our attitude in that sector, I tell you, we we'll continue suffering. Okay, right, your last word before we wrap up. Yes, um, for me, uh, this is what I always call, all that he said is just because our monitoring and performance system in this country, we have a problem out here. That's the difficulty I have. Because if there are criteria, you have a, a certain standards for all the police stations. And there is a department who is supposed to go around to check. How they be punishing those who don't live up to the standard? That's the bottom line. If, assuming that the police standard unit or whatever is mentioning. They come to my police station, maybe in Wager or whatever, and they find out that instead of 10 people being in the cell, there are 20. What do they do to the officers there? So if there are no punishment, if there are no, and you just go there and look at the number and say that, no, the number is too much. So do something about it. It does not work. There right. must be a reward system. Yeah. There must be a way of punishing those who are not going according to the rules and standards. So motivation is critical. Yes. All right. Your point has been made. Bright Demoji. And Bright Demoji is a member of parliament for Botiano English and Manfro. And we've also had in the studio Kinsley Abuaji Jedu. He's a member of parliament for Bibieso and Rianso Bekwai. Bibieni and Rianso Bekwai. Yeah, that's what I said. And I said Bibieso. Uh, oh no, is that what I said? Yes. Oh no, Bibiania. I know that very well, so that's okay. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well, and uh, so we've had them in the studio, and we hope to have you again sometime. And now we're taking a break. When we come back, we'll have a lot more for you on the show.